This is Raphael who's here tonight, and this is, and this is why I do this. It, it, this is the kind of thing I get that I, I go, I can't believe what people fucking have the time to think about. Lewis, I waited a long fucking time to see you, and I have to ask. Why the fuck do people tear the edges off peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? <laughs> and only eat the middle. Why, Lewis? Why? What about the poor fucking edge that was hoping to be part of that wonderful child experience only to be ripped from the fucking womb? Fuck me. Please, let's start a movement, Lewis. Let's get the edges back on. Um, Raphael, you can, I don't know where you're hanging out. <laughs> where you're watching people, is, is there some fucking place is, is, that you're watching people and they're just taking, you're, you're like, it, you go to a restaurant and they're going, fuck, it's the peanut butter and jelly restaurant of Fort Pierce. <laughs> and then people, they order it just to take the edge off. Wow. You, you don't, well, but you know, you don't have to do it. And that's the beginning of the movement, Raphael. <laughs> it's for you every day to literally come out of your house or your workplace, take a peanut butter jelly sandwich in and take that fucking sandwich and wander around the workplace just holding it in the air. <laughs> just go, look at this! Look at these edges! And then take a big bite and then gag and pretend you're dead. <laughs> Have you tried peanuts and candy corn? Why would you sully the taste of a peanut with, with the taste of excrement? You're ruining peanuts, you fuck. And I bet you don't even salt them. I bet you don't even fucking salt them. I'm reading this because it really is the, the amount of hate in this over nothing is just sp splendid. Because this is where hate should go. Hate doesn't go to another person, okay? Hate goes to inanimate objects that fuck with you. Hate goes to that phone where it's like, you know, you just wait, push button number three if you wish to speak to an orthopedic surgeon. That's where hate goes. It doesn't go to the person sitting next to you, the person across the street. It goes, it goes to fucking inanimate objects that drive you crazy. This is from uh, uh, Bill. This tale will shock you. It will make you weep and wail with anguish as you shake your fist at the heavens. That Shakespeare a asshole has nothing on this. I know you like to stand for your act, but it might be a good idea to sit down for this one. No. <laughs> I like to go to the store early to avoid all the fucking assholes. You know, the ones who act like a time work took them out of 1980s communist Russia and dropped them in the middle of the grocery store with more food than they've ever seen in their entire life. Everything was going fine. I'd breezed through the store in record time, got everything I needed, and even had an easy time driving back. Little did I know I was about to be fucking blindsided by a catastrophe of epic proportions. I was unpacking my last bag. It was a jar of peanut butter. Smucker's natural peanut butter. I find it superior. <laughs> All the other peanut butters on the market. Not because I'm some fucking nut job who can only eat free range, non GMO, humanely slaughtered peanuts, but because the ingredients are peanuts and a dash of salt. Two fucking ingredients! Why would you need anything else in your peanut butter? I don't know the answer to that, which is why I buy Smucker's Natural. As I pull the jar out of the bag to gaze wow, at my beloved peanut butter, <laughs> I noticed something, something was wrong. The top of the peanut butter was in a smooth landscape of pristine smashed peanuts, untouched by human hands. No, one of those smuckers at the factory had made a miniature diorama of the Normandy beaches in my jar <laughs> with sharp, jagged shapes spiking out of the peanut butter. This could only mean one thing. Chunky fuck peanut butter. <laughs> Chunky!
Kentucky, fuck peanut butter. Are you shitting me? Who the fuck eats this stuff? I wanted the smooth texture of a finely crushed nut, not the rocky fucking road of peanut butters. God damn it! Chunky fucking peanut butter? That's not peanut butter, that's work in progress. <laughs> if I turn that into a teacher, they'd mark it incomplete. Even Chrysler and GM have the decency to pretend and make it look like they're selling you a finished product. You didn't finish the job! You didn't finish the job, you smuckers! You were supposed to finish smashing all of the peanuts before you put them in the jar. That's what I pay you for, you assholes! If I wanted chunky fucking peanut butter, I'd buy my own peanuts and smash them with my fucking forehead until I passed out. Son of a bitch! The only people who like chucking fucking peanut butter are sociopaths and those highway construction workers who never finished building the fucking roads. <laughs> fucking ain't now I have to eat an entire jar of this shit. I'm not taking this back to the fucking store. I already took the little plastic fuck thing off the top of the jar. There's no way they're taking the shit back without that! I can try, but I know they're gonna think I'm doing some weird Unabomber shit. And I put something in there as, as if eating chunky peanut butter wasn't enough to kill a man. God damn it! I take it outside and run over it a couple of times to finish the job if I wasn't concerned about shredding my wheels with the jagged, uncrushed nuts. Those smuckers gave me, son of a bitch! Looks like I have only one option left to me, Lou. The way I see it, my only option is to take the entire jar of peanut butter, scoop it out onto my granite countertop and smash the chunky, piece, peanut, chunky pieces with my face <laughs> until either it or my head turns to mush. <laughs> it's a win-win. If I survive my ordeal, I'll have the smooth peanut butter that every God-fearing true blue American would be proud to eat. <laughs> if I die, well, at least I won't have to live in a world where assholes make chunky fuck peanut butter. <laughs> See you on the other side, Lou, from Bill in Chicago. I simply cannot stand these people that feel that having peanut butter and jelly in the same jar is a natural thing to do. <laughs> they refuse to accept that it's disgusting, and not to mention incredibly lazy. What are your thoughts, Lewis? <laughs> My thoughts are that uh, uh, if you were going to let us save, uh, as, uh, if you were going to have a fake bar bark mitzvah for your dog, <laughs> and you used the peanut butter and jelly combination, it might be an, a, a kind of an interesting thing because as the dog began to look like it was talking and, and we'd be doing your bar mitzvah portion, the jelly would make it look like it, it, he was struggling so hard to speak that the jelly would look like blood coming out of his mouth. <laughs> That, that peanut butter and jelly, you know that's just dog shit. They might as well just say, hi, uh, don't even call peanut butter and jelly, just say dog shit, D-A-W-G-S-H-I-T-T-T. -T -T. It's disgusting, it's fucking disgusting, and you had every right to complain about it. And it shouldn't be on our shelves. They, they put something else to fucking that's anything, fucking anything. More olives, more olives! <laughs> Joel Snitzer, I love this one. To this day, I will never understand my non-Jewish friends from fifth grade till now, who always asked and continue to ask us during Passover. So, Joel, are you happy you'll get to eat matzah again? <laughs> happy? Happy? Who could possibly be happy to eat what is essentially the devil's cracker? It is without a doubt the most bland, dry, tasteless thing I've ever had to stomach, and I've made the mistake of changing the channel to C-SPAN. Oh, but Joel, you can flavor it with butter or peanuts or oh, peanut butter or all sorts of things. Yeah, because otherwise it tastes like absolute shit. 
I get that we're eating it to remember what our people went through, but they didn't have a choice. We're not slaves anymore, so if anything, we should be eating extra leavened bread so we never have to eat that nasty shit ever again. It is, that shit is awful. That's, but when I was 21, I stopped that. You, are you just getting matzo this week? No. No. This one is great because I haven't heard about this stuff in years. I want to share and invite you to share one little thing that I just cannot get over, no matter how much time passes. Some background. I worked as a stocker in a large grocery store a couple of years ago. And if you want to understand the eating habits of the American consumer, ask a stocker. Um, we were able to measure the distribution of food stamps by the fact that we'd get huge shipments of macaroni and cheese and SpaghettiOs. We were able to gauge when the military base came through based on when the cereal aisle was cleaned out good. Not sure what was going on there, but it was a pattern we picked up on. We as a crew also knew the big ticket items that needed to be restocked almost nightly. Honey nut Cheerios, chicken noodle soup, brown sugar. You might notice some commonalities. Hmm? Very simple staple items in many household diets. But one item to this day sends me into a cold sweat every time I pass it because it flummoxed me. Large tubs of marshmallow fluff. <laughs> I have not heard that or seen it in, God, 30 years. And I'm just glad to know it's still out there, even though it, it's caused her to have anxiety. At least twice a week, twice a week, I would stock a brand new case of those things. That's around 60 or 70, 16 ounce tubs of marshmallow spread a week. Who the hell is eating all of this <laughs> chewy sponge ejaculate? When I was growing up, we always had a tub of fluff in my home. <laughs> but it took us near to eight months to use the crap up. Besides putting it on peanut butter sandwiches, I'm not even aware of anything to use it with. Perhaps the health conscious would use it for dipping fruit in when your banana desperately needs to commit a culinary war crime. Even the, even the official fluff web page. <laughs> I didn't even know, I kept, they've got a web page. Can only promote it as being useful in outer space. <laughs> Apparently Obama didn't cut the space program as much as we all thought. <laughs> but I suppose it makes sense. If I was picking a likely candidate to enjoy the, the taste of this geriatric whale spunk, it would be someone who had just arrived on Earth from outer space. The average supermarket serves three to 4,000 people, 50 pounds of industrial marshmallow goo a week. It's just too much. Buy a fucking yogurt, for Christ's sake. Best wishes. This is from Michael Knox. Exactly when the fuck? Did peanut allergies become the T-cell zombie virus from Resident Evil movie? I keep hearing about schools all over the country banning, banning pe pe peanut butter. And not just creating peanut safe zones in cafeterias, but no peanut products anywhere on the entire goddamn campus. They even have to post warning signs in bakeries and restaurants. Now, just so this doesn't come across as a harsh and sensitive rant. <laughs> I did some research on this affliction and apparently it's pretty fucking bad. You can't predict when or how a child will react to a mere whiff of peanut dust. Holy shit! How fucking long do we have to wait for modern medicine to come up with a vaccine for Jesus George Washington Carver's sake? And it turns out that the best way to prevent peanut allergies is eating some peanut products before the age of one. Are you fucking kidding me? The vaccine is goddamn peanut butter.
I say we start giving peanut butter to every goddamn baby in the country so they can finally enjoy a fucking PB and J sandwich. <laughs> Who's with me? Good night, Bethlehem. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.